This week, I'm going to show you why the island of Kauai is one of my favorite photo locations. I'm here with my good buddy David Archer, leading an epic workshop, and this is what it's all about. So, we'll talk a little bit more when we have some better audio about this particular location, which this is the fourth day we've been here. And I'll showcase some of how cool this island is, as well as we need to talk a little bit about why it's important to keep going back over and over again to the same location. I mean, have you ever really gotten exactly what you wanted the first time you were there? Rarely. Maybe now and again, but we'll talk about that. So welcome to this week's Approaching the Scene. We are on our lanai here on the North Shore of Kauai, one of my absolute favorite places to photograph on the planet. I'm with my good buddy David Archer from South Carolina. Yeah. And we've been we've been running a number of workshops together. How, how we have we done at least half a dozen, I guess. Yeah, we're we well we've been shooting together a long time and we've yeah. been everywhere from Olympic National Park to Patagonia, Charleston a couple of times. Charleston here on Kauai. Yeah. Um, but this this has been a really really fun workshop and I think it highlights a couple of things about why I love Kauai so much. There's just such a diverse array of things to shoot yes and yeah. this island feels more like kind of old school hawaii than some of the other islands it does it's less developed yeah less commercial there's a lot more i mean we ran into a monk seal on the beach day we're kind of out looking for surfers and we find this sleeping endangered monk seal and i got a bit yeah. rolled in a wave <laughs> that's right <laughs> photographing it i've been waiting for so long to get this landscape shot with you know, the, the peaks of the North Shore of Kauai, those kind of iconic peaks in the background, and it was sleeping, looking like it was dead, and I was waiting for a wave to hit it to make it roll, and I was laying in the surf, and what happened? Yeah, the wave came in, and... and, and well, both it, of us. Yeah, both of us. <laughs> it was like a rogue wave came in. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh, it's going to hit the... Oh, no, it's going to hit me, too. I still got yeah. a shot, though. And yeah. you got the winner shot. You got to share that. We'll throw that up in the video yeah. here. You were... David was shooting with the with the... 500 and got this just we, you'll see we yeah. both got cool shots that yeah. kind of complement each other we've been dodging white water a lot this trip we have we've been dodging white water a lot and a lot we've been a lot of white water. yeah and we've had a really cool crew it's been it's been a lot of fun we've been photographing a lot of tide action waves uh shorelines you know we've been up and down the island the canyon we went on open door helicopter trip how cool is that yeah. it was awesome I really think, you know, if you're coming to Kauai, you owe it to yourself to just take a helicopter over the island. It's so spectacularly beautiful. And you get to appreciate just how wild and diverse the island is from the air. And if you love photography, the open door helicopter, uh, we went with Ali'i Air. They were awesome. Uh, couldn't recommend them more highly. Bobby was an awesome pilot for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyhow, right. one of the things I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, before we kind of move on is... is just as a little bit of a lesson, going to a place more than one time, not expecting yeah. that you can show up at some iconic location and just snap that photo that you're dreaming of capturing. You know, That's right. David and I for years have been seeing a photo of a kind of a elusive uh, blowhole here. It's a little like Thor's well on the Oregon coast, uh, but not a lot of photos of it, just a few out there. And we started doing some research and I'm going to tell you right up heads, if you're hoping to get the location and all that, we're, we're not going to share it. Uh, it's one of those places that's a little bit hard to find. It's a little treacherous. People could get hurt. It's a long bit of travel for a dawn photograph with rough roads and some dangerous climbing around on slickery rocks with drop-offs. And, and I just think it's nice that not that many people know about it. You know, having been to Mesa Arch and <laughs> having been to Thor's Well now, you know, these popular spots just kind of inundated with people taking photos. So you know, if you're intrepid and if you do the same kind of work that David and I did, it, it, you can find it and it's amazing. And I'd ask, you know, think about not broadcasting it far and wide. Let's keep a few places wild. And also, you know, I'd hate to see somebody get killed that didn't belong there uh, yeah. and then close the whole thing down yeah. and fence it off and say no access. It's a pretty wild place. So, yeah. but David and I, we did our research. We studied maps. We went back and forth a bit before ever coming here. And then before the workshop started... We went out in the middle of the day and we found this place and we even took some photos that day kind of it was actually the action was pretty good on it and we observed yeah. what the tide was and then yeah. we took some of the people from the workshop that were able to get there 
and we went out and we uh, we photographed it the first morning and there were no clouds. It was a kind of a cool sun star opportunity on the tide reef. There's beautiful stuff to photograph in the tide pools all over this island. But the, the you know, the, this thing was, was a little bit too low a tide. We knew that. There wasn't enough wave action. It wasn't going great. Yeah. Yeah. And it was at dawn and we, we were studying the tide charts and we knew that the tide would keep getting bigger every day. There's a number of things that have to come together for this thing to work. You need clouds, you need the right surf action to create that pumping action where the water comes in through the hole in the reef and blows up out of the hole in the lava and then comes washing back down into it as well as the right tide level that it's safe to be there. There's a, this whole conjunction of things. Yeah, we had to check it for safety. Yeah. So we took everybody out there. It didn't really work the first day. We went out the second day, and there was just no surf. It was just calm. So we came back, and yeah. one of the things I did was swim in Queen's Bath here near yeah. Princeville, which is something I've dreamed of doing a long time. But another thing we did, we had to go to Plan B. We had to go find alternate. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, spots, David. Which we did. David found this awesome kind of mini blowhole. And it was, the water was rushing down into, it was just a little tide pool on the side of the shelf where we were. And it created a cool, really similar effect. And we got some beautiful photographs there because that was actually happening, even though the larger thing we'd come to photograph wasn't. So we got there, nice, light, beautiful clouds. We did some interesting things or God rays coming out of the clouds. It was a beautiful dawn. Yeah. Just wasn't happening where we came to photograph. So we all went to plan B. And finally today is the Fourth day, David and I have been out. The third day, our workshop people have been out. You know, people start going, well, what are we doing in the same place? Well, you know, to capture a great iconic image, sometimes you got to go a number of times, revisit, go back, wait for conditions to be right. You know, I'm, I'm not a big, big guy that does sky replacements and a whole bunch of selections and moving things around in my images. I, I keep going back until I find what I was looking for and I try to get it right on the day. Now that doesn't mean I'm not doing HDR. We're shooting straight into the sun with a shadowed shelf of white water, but I got some video that really, yeah. yeah that and so does David. David's got some video of me. I got some video of David and other people from the workshop and yeah, that'll be great. All of us have a real great problem to have. We have hundreds and hundreds of images of this amazing place. Good light, cool clouds and incredible action this morning. The yeah. surf really came up. It was pounding. We had it all. We really had it all this morning. You but know? you have to get up and go. <laughs> you do. You do. You know, the weather here 30 minutes away may be different than it is there. It's true. It changes from minute to minute. Yeah. So yeah. you never know if you don't go. It's true. It's a true story. And the alarm went off at 5 a.m. And it was, the, we had tried to do day. Milky Way a couple of days before, or I had, and a couple other people were willing. and. Woke up and there were clouds and waved it off. I got almost no sleep two nights ago. With this, this workshop, you know, we don't get much sleep, particularly yeah. David and I, but we have a lot of fun. So, you know, I think, I think the message I'd like to drive home is you've got to be out there to get great images. You need to be out there in the good light. And you need to spend time researching, figuring out where you want to be, looking at it in the middle of the day. And sometimes you got to go back to the same place over and over. you got to lot that time. Uh, it's the only way that you're really going to get great images. Every now and then you get lucky and the monk seal is laying on the right. beach when you walk right. up and everything works out. You know, we didn't research where we're likely to find monk seals. They just happened to be there and we had all of our gear with us. So, um, hey, David, what, what's been your favorite part of this workshop so far? You know, it's hard to say. We've done a lot of great things. We did the helicopter ride. Yeah. We've had great meals. Yeah, we've eaten some really good food. That new that new ramen, fancy ramen place oh, yeah. in Hanalei is epic. We did sunset at KA Beach. That yeah. was great. Other than the, the crawl across the rocks. And yeah. They changed the access there, and it's well, much the, harder. the flooding had changed the yeah. trails pretty significantly. So, you know. Harder than it used to be. But much harder. We got out and we got back. And we did. Yeah, and we got some got cool some images, shots. Yeah. We, yeah, we got some good stuff. So that the was monk, a nice night, actually. The monk seal was, was way cool. Yeah. Unexpected. Completely unexpected. Yeah. But, you know, I'm kind of a sucker for the motion of water and rock, and and that lava tube blowhole has this to morning. be the highlight for me. This morning? Well, a little bit of each day. Yeah, it's true. It's just a lot. You of know, fun. just, just the experience of being there, because I've, I've been to Thor's Well, I've been to Paley's Well yeah. on the Big Island. And now this thing. I was on Maui for 10 days before the workshop started. and I. Which one's made, your favorite of those three? Right now, I'd have to say this one. Oh, this one's pretty great. It's pretty great. Because it's larger and it's more dramatic. Yeah, it, because this whoosh, yeah. and the steam comes blowing out of it. The water sucks down when the big waves come in. 
and you see it disappear. And then when the big wave comes in, you're not sure how big it's going to be. And it goes, Oof, and it snorts a bunch of steam out. And then, boom, it's just crazy. And we almost had it to ourselves. Yeah, we did. You go to Thor's Well, for example, and you can't get any shots for tourists walking around the rim with their cell phones. Right. And I'm not trying to keep anyone out of this place. I just, I don't want the masses and the hordes. Too many yeah. people watch this. So, you know. It can be dangerous. It can be seriously dangerous. They all can. But... They all can. You never turn your back on the ocean in a situation where you're photographing wave action and you're anywhere close to it. And you always have kind of a plan for getting out of there. But yeah. this has been an awesome workshop with a fantastic group of people. Uh, and I'd be super bummed to be saying goodbye to David, but we're going to be in Costa Rica and yeah. not so far off. Yeah, early June. Early June. A few we, places left, I believe. There's just a few. Yeah, it's yeah. almost completely sold out. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We have some spouses coming along with the workshop participants. I think we already have like 10 people coming. Uh, and so there's just a few more slots. You can bring a spouse if you want for a reduced rate. It's a beautiful eco resort we're staying in. There's yeah. going to be tons of wildlife. Uh, and great food and yeah. monkeys, sloths, yeah. green eyed tree frogs. It's a real simple trip too. You get off the plane and everything's taken care of. So yeah. if you're interested in that, I'll put a link on the website. And if you have any questions about this or, you know, the, 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 any of the photographic locations on Kauai aside from potentially that, that blowhole hit me up, put your notes in the comments. Tell me if you hate the fact we're not telling you where the blowhole is. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's just how it is. And, uh, and you know, this whole channel's driven by what people want to hear, what the, 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 what you guys watching are interested in. It's, it's your channel as much as mine. So hit me in the comments, send me emails and, uh, and thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Thanks, David. This has been a blast. All right, man. Let's go photograph one more sunset. Oh, yeah. <laughs>